For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney and we're here with Frederick Yadling from Ericsson to discuss all of the news that Ericsson's put out the past few days. It's really been quite comprehensive in support of these end-to-end -end 5G offerings. So, uh, Frederick, perhaps we could start with the RAN Compute and uh, help us understand a little bit how this really helps enable these low latency 5G use yeah. cases. Yeah. No, good. So, yeah, RAN Compute is uh, actually it's a bit of a new word for uh, the old basebands, but it redefines what baseband actually do. And it sort of liberates the baseband away from maybe the little container. In, other, in essence, we see a compute capability being able to be deployed anywhere in the network, depending on the use case you might want to get towards. So let's say you wanted a use case that is very high latency requirements. You want, might want to put that compute capability very close up to the radio. Then there are other deployments where you might want to virtualize that baseband capability because they're not so latency uh, sensitive. So the whole RAN compute concept is around being able to distribute compute capability as and where it's needed in the network in a far more flexible way. To that point, we're launching four new products as well, but that, that's uh, capacity enhancing products uh, and also two of them that are ruggedized to fit outside in the outdoor. So to this edge point, do you see the build out of edge intelligence and edge compute as something that's going to be driven by operators or something that might follow more of a, a neutral host type deployment model? I think the operators have actually very, very good position in that because of the simple reason that you know you can find a couple of central offices in a city and you could build out compute capabilities out on those or distribute an edge out there. I think if you want to get real latency requirement, high, low latency requirement uh, type of applications, then you need to sit further out in geography. And the only one that has that real estate are the actually operators. So, so I think uh, in a way then operators are in fashion when it comes to, to mobile edge because they actually have that edge. And another announcement was around spectrum sharing. In the, in the US, we're keenly focused on 3.5 as a first glance at spectrum sharing, but it really is much more important than just 3.5. Can you share the broader perspective? Yeah, from our perspective, when you want to introduce a new technology to an existing band, before you have that set of a number of handsets on there, you might actually sacrifice really great revenue generating 4G traffic and allocate part of that to 5G. That's not so smart because you actually will drive down your revenue ultimately until the 5G picks up. So what instant spectrum sharing actually allows is to fully utilize that spectrum either for dynamically, either for 4G or 5G traffic. So you don't have to make that refarming decision as an operator. You can also call it instant refarming. It's more or less the same thing. All right, and you know this 5G discussion is oftentimes focused on RAN and core, but transport's a key element. I know Ericsson's been working very hard to uh, update the transport portfolio. Can you maybe take us through some of the new product launches? We'll, we'll do that, and I, I think first of all, we've had our uh, front hall, back hall, uh, or let's say by back hall, microwave solution. That's back hall in microwave back into the, to the site. Uh, we also have front hall solution, or cell site routers, that have been very successful in the last, let's say, couple of years since we introduced that. Uh, we've seen though that compared to some of our competitors, we've had a bit of a gap on the areas around uh, edge routers and the core routers. And we now announced that through a collaboration or cooperation agreement with, uh, uh, with Juniper, we're now able to drive that whole transport bit beyond the cell site route and all the way onto the core. Uh, and we do that with Juniper then. And on top of that, we build a, a management and control layer that Ericsson produced to make sure the whole end-to-end -end experience is coordinated, which is fundamental from a 5G perspective. So with that, we have a full portfolio and we allow ourselves to be the real experts on the radio side and we partner on the transport side. So as it relates to microwave, I, I think there might be some perception that this is sort of a, a last resort type mechanism, but given the, the density that we'll see with 5G, it's really just a, another necessary tool, right? It, it will be for sure, and you're not going to be able to drive that mass multitude of, uh, of, let's say, sites that you need to build on 5G on millimeter way without anything else than possibly E-band backhauling uh, on the microwave. So it comes very in handy in this uh, bigger bigger macro size, of course, and you might still need to have a fiber, fiber type of access to it. So what's the big picture around all these announcements? What do all of these enhancements to your products mean for your customers? Well, hopefully it means that the customer chooses us for, for the 5G deployment. And uh, we've seen some really good evidence of that during these couple of days with the T-Mobile. Uh, we announced the day before yesterday, $3.5 billion deal. AT&T has selected us, and so we've got a, another set of deals that we also announced early in the US and in Europe. So, 
we want to make sure that we stay. For us, it's fundamental to be a technology leader in the market. That's why the customer choose us. We do it not just to be a technology leader, but it needs to mean something. It needs to mean that the operators can have a production cost that is absolutely optimal. It's a competitive world for our customers, and we need to be the ones who provide that edge in terms of the performance as well as cost per gigabyte quality. Frederick, I appreciate you giving us an update on all the great work Ericsson's been doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.